First we have to test the power cord if it is not broken. Before we check power cable, we have first to prepare this special liquid. It's got a powerful purpose right before the end of this video. Power cable test is requires switch box to be opened. We will use this mount meter to check the power cable's condition. This mode will adjust automatically for the cable continuity testes. First side is 0 ohms, which is good. Let's see what is on the second side. 0 ohms. This means the power cable is good. The switch box must be tested across all speed settings, from low to high. If we measure 0 ohms between live wire and all speed gears, the switch is functioning properly. This switch is good. Let's keep digging. Client smelled burning and that means something inside the motor is definitely not happy. Keep each set of screws grouped and in order. This helps make sure you don't accidentally put a long screw where a short one should go. A long screw can cause cross threading or damage this thread. Take photos as you go, it makes reassembly much easier. This is where things get interesting. Let's look for any signs of damage that might explain why the fan went silent. Nothing wrong here, but that only depends the mystery. Time to turn our attention to the capacitor. Now let's see what the mount meter has to say. This test could confirm if the capacitor is truly good. Set your mount meter to capacitance mode. Short the terminals to discharge the capacitor before testing. The label says 1.5 microfarads. Capacitor is good. Let's move on and see what else could be stopping this fan. The capacitor passed the test, but something is still wrong. Time to unscrew the motor and look close. Right here, this is the plastic gearbox, the part that makes the fan swing side to side. But since our fan isn't powering on at all, this doesn't look guilty just yet, so we'll leave it sealed for now. We've ruled out the gearbox, now it's time to face the most suspicious part, the motor. Let's see what it's been hiding. With the motor finally open, take a look at the stator. This is where electricity becomes motion, but it's also where damage hides. Be gentle, dropping it or touching those exposed wires could ruin the entire motor. Let's look for signs of burning, broken windings or loose wires. We're not done yet. Look closely at that shaft. See that grime? That could be our next suspect. Reason number four, dirt and debris, silent troublemakers causing friction and blocking movement. And to deal with it, we're not holding back. Petrol, a trusty toothbrush, and something else hidden in this little box. Every small part matters. Washers, cooling fans, even that thin film of grime hiding between layers. Into the petrol they go, soaking away years of dust and dirt. And just a touch on the shaft too. We're not letting grime slow us down. Nope, too rough. Still a no. Could damage the shaft. Ah, that's the one. Soft, effective, and safe. Oh wait, Dama, look at that. A deep ridge worn into the shaft. This rotor shaft is beyond saving. Time to swap it out with a better smooth salvage shaft. Behind these covers lies the real mess. Bush bearings wrapped in old crumbling foam. It's time to retire this grime. And give every part a fresh start in a petrol bath. The grime's loosened, now it's time to wipe off every trace. Because reassembly needs clean precision. Now, remember that mystery box? Let's see what's inside. And yep, that's our secret weapon. You didn't see that coming, did you? Bush bearings. Small parts, big impact. They'll grind if dirt stays inside. Scrub until the earbud emerges completely clean. See that pile? That's what's been sabotaging your fan. 
Now watch this closely. Some fans die not from fault, but from friction. A little oil in the right place saves the whole motor. Reason number five, dry parts equals dead fan. One wrong oil and you might be creating a problem instead of fixing one. Stick to machine oil. It's the safest choice for keeping these tiny parts moving smoothly. Remember that mystery oil I drained earlier from the fridge compressor? Well, this is its moment. It's clean, efficient and perfect for precision lubrication like this. A few drops go a long way. With this kind of lubrication, we're restoring the smooth spin that this fan desperately needs. Now that every small part is clean and oiled, it's time to reassemble with care. Every washer, every cooling fan blade, it all needs to fit just right or the fan won't work. This is where things get serious. You need to follow your own disassembly photos closely because one wrong placement here and you risk snapping the stator. And if that happens, it's game over. Align the plastic gear properly. These points must match the crank lever. If not, the fan won't oscillate. These covers trap more dust than you think. Always wipe them clean. If you don't, that dirt could choke your motor sooner than you expect. This fan works now, but what if the rotor or stator was damaged? Tap that subscribe button right below, because next time we're diving deeper into how to repair the stator and rotor using this diagram.